Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Edge Cares Talk. So, uh, before we get started, how are you guys doing on today? I'm doing alright. And how about with you, KJ? How are you doing? Man, I'm doing all right, man. Um, ready for the school year to end, but I'm doing fine. <laughs> yes. So, um, we have not heard from you um, in a while. So the last time that you was on was actually with me, of where you share your COVID um, story. So I just want to check up and with you now, and then also with our listeners, how are you doing now? Um, at this moment as far as health or like yeah overall and overall uh, I, man i'm doing i'm doing good um just been take, trying to take it day by day especially with school and the workload and my job as well um but i'm doing well i'm doing well so um, that's, that's a good thing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And we also heard that you, um, will be graduating this spring. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. So, Andrew, you have anything, um, before we begin, we start? Nope. Um, uh, no, I don't. Um, welcome back, KJ. I miss you dearly. I miss you. Um, I think everybody here at Future It's Here's Talk miss you. So welcome back. Um, but let's get this show on the road. All right. So kick us off, Andrew. We are going to talk about how restorative justice helps students learn. So restor restorative justice allows everyone affected by a harm or a harm to return to a calm state that is optimal for learning. So it, off it offers healthy alternatives to, to the, to, if I can speak on today, to the traditional display approach of rules and consequences of breaking those rules. RJ practice, practice such as peer conflict Resolution re re circles, reflection sheets that guides conversations with a teacher or an administrator, and meditate student to student or student to adult conversations are practice that allows students and communities to feel safe and successful together. So I want to hear from y'all about um, about this. I really have much to say about it uh, because mainly you know what's understood really didn't have to be explained it's vital to ensure that we educate our kids about restorative justice and that we kind of include that within our curriculum to of our students to be aware and to uh, be I guess you could say cognizant of the fact that there are differences in the community there are you know um, uh, differences within racial and ethnic groups and so um, just have them be cognizant of that um, and find create our curriculum in that space is vital to uh, for them to be uh, aware of the you know backgrounds traditions and the diversity of the world right now um I want to pose this question out to you guys. Um, why do you think restored to justice, um, it is so important now um, in our schools? Why do they need to be implemented into our schools, do you think? I think the main reason is because of everything that's going on in the world. Kids are being exposed to these different um, uh, things on social media that that highlights racism and injustice and inequality and so um, and so that's what they see and you know it's our job to educate them on that I agree yeah, absolutely absolutely 
of course, with you know, you got the Black Lives Matter, you got George Floyd shooting, you got mm-hmm. the shooting, you got all those things that's going on, and those kids, those students, will look at that and <clears throat> look at the. Um, it's kind of like a cause and effect uh, situation. Um, basically, yeah, it's basically like a cause and effect. Uh, they can see what was the cause and they can see what is the effect of, of that situation. And, you know, like you said, KJ, kids, students will see that. They, they see what's going on in the world. So I think it's important for them to to kind of like um, go out there and and peaceful protest and, and, and go out there and stand what you believe in. Um, you can't just stay quiet all the time. So you have to go out there and speak whatever's on your mind. Speak your opinion, voice your opinion. Um, and of course, people don't want to uh, don't want to hear from you, but at the end of the day, your voice matters. So, yeah, exactly. Especially with students, um, especially students. And I feel that um, you, you know what's going on around the world. It needs to be you know implemented into our schools because our students they need to be aware of what's going on. Because if if they don't, then for me, then how you know how would they know of you know of this and that? That they need to know what's being you know what's currently happening, current you know current trends, and mm-hmm. I believe that educators you know they should somehow you know be talking about that you know into their lessons in schools. But some educators you know they don't want to do that, and I understand why. Why? Why they don't want to talk about you know certain stuff, but they you know they they want to teach this, but they don't want to touch base on you know, because they have no knowledge maybe no you know of what to talk about. So to me, like what what, what with you, KJ? Why are some educators you know they are you know not touching base on certain topics into their classrooms? It's just ridiculous with me. They're too scared to to basically talk about it. That's just my opinion. I think but I, they don't know how to teach it. Yeah, and you're right. I feel like they just don't know how to teach it. They don't know how to approach it. They don't want it to be, you know, too sensitive. Mm-hmm. You know, in that in that space. So you know, there's there's a lot of reasons, but I feel like that's one of the main reasons. What about you, Andrew? The main thing is they don't want to. Um, they don't want to tell the, their students kind of like the right way versus the wrong way, and they also fear that they may get fired or they may get um, suspended. Mm. because of talking about those topics. So that's probably why they kind of like, they really don't want to talk about it because because of fear of their or of their consequences if they do, um, if they do those things. You know, the fact that it needs to be taught, but it's not being taught because they don't know how to teach it, you know, mm-hmm. calls for, you know, less of a, response by teachers and more of a response by professional development programs and curriculum writers and and administration um, to find ways to integrate that into the curriculum uh, that fits with the national and state standards. So supporting self-esteem for that uh, restorative justice. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper. So when someone, a student or an adult, feels unsafe at home or experience, ex, experiences di, uh, discrimination from their background, identity, or other reasons, they may come to school with an already over-simulated nervous system. 
So what that means, it's easier for them to become that uh, dice regulated, uh, which means to experience a sympathetic fight, flee, or froze. No, fright, fight, flee, freeze, or submit response. Got to break it down even more. During a rule violation or enforcement moment. So, I cannot do it. <laughs> For example, psychology, a student who breaks a rule receive, receives punishment may begin to identify as a bad kid and may be seen by their peers as someone who always get in trouble, aka class clown, aka the one that I always go to ISS every single day. Moving forward, a cycle that is sometimes repeated again and again. So through the reflective process of order of justice, this student can instead learn about the impact of their actions and reflect upon their membership in the community. So now they have a chance to grow their self-esteem and to preserve themselves as a human who has made a mistake or bad decisions and is taking responsibility for their actions. So I'm gonna go ahead and read that last line for you because this is the reason why I'm reading this last line because Damien here is, he is huge on this. Um, he is huge on this and is taking responsibility for the actions. So I'm going to read it again for the people in the back because I don't think please they do. Please do. Is taking responsibility for the actions. So, so what you, that means is if you don't take responsibility for the actions, then we have a problem. Mm -hmm. There will be some consequences because if you do not own up to what you did, there will be consequences behind it. So if you said or did something and other people, you know, saying that you did it, you did it and you blame yourself for not doing it or you blame something else, mm -hmm. that is wrong. Just own up to your truth. Mm -hmm. Just own up to it. Take responsibility for it. It's not going to hurt you in the long run. It Well, it, it may, you know, depending on the situation that you're in, it may. But if you try, you know, keep that in, keep that in, keep that in. Oh boy, consequences are going to happen because you did not own up to what you did. So that's my take on it. Yes. So yes, take ownership, take ownership, take on, take ownership. And I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go reverse here. Um, so of course you got that one classmate that always get in trouble. Right. <laughs> you, like you always got this one classmate that always get in trouble. That always go go to ISS or A O or ASO. You always got that one student that always go to the principal's office. And I think, again, it, it, again, it, it's about you know talking to that person, you know, learn learn their story, but also that person can also learn from the mistakes, even if they don't want to, but they can learn from this because there are people that are supporting that person to be successful, to, to graduate high school, to do better things than what that person is doing now. So like if that person is in ASO, but the people behind them, like, I want you to get us ASO because you have a better life ahead of you. Because I want you to succeed. I want you to go to college. So again, that's part of that that, that supporting self esteem. If I can talk on today, because apparently I am stuttering. Can't even complete my sentences, and I don't know why. Okay, good. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, that's what my thoughts on that is, um, is supporting self-esteem because the point is, 
it's important to have that that self self esteem. Right, I agree.